Hey everyone, today we're in Massachusetts. It is October 14th, 2024. We're going to check out the triangular great culvert. We haven't been here all year because last year the beavers were displaced and never came back. There was huge floods in Massachusetts and downstream nearby a flood retention reservoir shut their gates to prevent damage to people's property and flooding downstream. As a result, they held up so much water that it flooded all the woods around here like a lake for three months. All the trees that were underwater died and all the remaining trees still to this day, the big mature trees have water lines on them anywhere up to eight feet off the ground. The whole woods was flooded. It flooded the beaver lodge and the beavers never came back. I at least they never came back last year. I haven't been here this year yet, so we're going to see it. I'm very curious about that. The fall colors are looking pretty nice in Massachusetts. This road is mostly oak, which might turn a little yellow, maybe brown, maybe dark red. It's not as pretty as the maples, but still looking good for this time of year. driving the old car today just because it's better on gas when I go down to Massachusetts. So this road has a bunch of new aggressive signs for some reason. I guess it has to do with hunting or something. All the gates say that you need permits to go hunting down here. Those signs were never there before. We'll be there in a few minutes. I don't know what to expect either because all the rivers, everything in Massachusetts seems to be pretty dried up. Pretty dried up. My area, yeah, also kind of dried up. Not a severe drought or anything because it hasn't been hot. It's been cool weather, just not a lot of rain. So it's not really negatively affecting the woods that much because the ground is still damp. It just hasn't been raining, but Without the heat, it's okay. I think we're here at the bottom of this hill. Yep, there's the parking space. I have a video from last summer. The water was up to about this little hump in the road, I think. Yeah, this whole thing was impassable. You couldn't even tell where the road was. It was so deep, the water. Can we see the water lines yet? Yep, the tree to the left has one. And look at this big tree on the left of the road. Can you see this? Okay, see my finger? This is a water line right here. This whole, like, six feet of that tree was underwater. I can tell there's no beavers. They're still displaced, but I want to get out and show it, do an update. This is one of the reasons I haven't really been to Massachusetts in literally five months, which isn't normal. I used to come down here every couple weeks or a month, and all my good old beaver locations aren't here anymore. Last night I even went to the Connecticut Beaver Swamp. Nothing. They were relocated a while back. Yeah, right here, look at that. I gotta even take some pictures of that. Look at that dominant line on the trees of where the flood was. Like eight feet off the ground. Where I'm standing right now, my face would be deep underwater. Like... This tree I was just pointing at is not the best example, but I'll walk up to some better examples of that. So this used to be up here. This is lower than I've ever seen it before. Here, here's the beaver's old lodge. I have videos that was standing tall and grand. Now it looks like when it flooded, maybe part of it floated or that thing somehow got destroyed. Yep, where I am was eight feet underwater. Even down here, the beavers must have been displaced. This water is also the lowest I've ever seen it. Usually there's a good amount of water up here. And yeah, down here was a massive beaver dam. That actually, look, look right there, look right there. That That's actually a brand new beaver lodge. Okay. I bet you, give it a year or so, those beavers will probably be back up here. But they're not maintaining as well. There used to be a massive beaver dam, which is gone. It was right about where that lodge is, going across the valley. It got washed out from that storm. And just look down there. Look at the water line. 
amazing. Let's zoom back in on that lodge. I'm getting a few still pictures too at the moment. That's interesting, very interesting. This was so flooded. But yeah, this is usually deeper. You see over here all these grassy plains that all used to be a permanent beaver pond. But down there, that dam must have got washed out by the floods. But it is nice to see that there is a big beaver lodge back. The beavers might be back up here, give it a year or so to come back up here because this is also good building potential for them. But they were always here clogging this. Oh my gosh, the idiot with the excavator struck again. Look at all these mangled bars. So this thing is not here to collect debris from blocking the pipe. It is here so beavers don't block the pipe. Wow, look at the excavator even broke off one of the main pieces. Look at that. Absolute moron. Someone working in this area should know their structures. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. But this structure is here so beavers can clog it. They feel satisfied. It takes them quite a while to clog it up. If there was a flood, it can pour over the top without destroying the road. If this structure wasn't here, beavers would build a dam usually in the end of the pipe or even in the middle of the pipe where you can't always access it. Then the excavator has to get a telephone pole, jam it back and forth in there to get it out. But this makes it much easier to unclog. I can't believe how much they destroyed that. And beavers aren't even involved. So if beavers aren't involved, there's no way that this thing was ever not noticeable. This area did not flood this year. This thing... The person just did not care. If they had the excavator out here, they should have probably lifted it up from the middle there. This looks like the guy tried to remove the debris without removing the grate. Insane. It's insane. I haven't seen something like that in a while. I usually compliment the people that take care of these ones. I guess they got a new guy on the job. Wow. So that thing can no longer serve its purpose, basically. Those bars always kept the beavers out, but now that there's that big opening, beavers can get right on in there. Because of the flow of the water, the beavers will rarely ever try to get material up the exiting end. It's always from this end. No beavers here at the moment, but hopefully they fix that. That's one of the best culvert designs I've ever seen. It's worked perfectly for years until that. But here's an update of our old location, and this is why I haven't been really doing much in Massachusetts anymore. The old lake drain I also visited today made an update video. It also, they created a good beaver structure. They put a nice fence around it. The beavers built the dam along the fence. But what the beavers don't realize is a pipe going under the fence to a beaver deceiver that lets water through their dam without them noticing. The water's equal on both sides of their dam, but... The beavers feel accomplished enough that they don't do anything else, which is pretty interesting. The lake drain actually has a really good beaver structure. Whoever put that up did a good job. So I'm trying to see some water lines up close. I guess you got to be far away to really see it. Nice right here. That's a good water line indication about six feet. That's about level with my head. And as you go up the road, the water lines get less and less. Like if we zoom up here on this tree, you can see that's probably only four feet off the ground. But it went up there to almost around that corner there. Really interesting stuff. Some of these trees fell over from the soft mud, but I think that was actually many years ago. You see the tree stumps in here? At some point before the beavers moved in, this whole thing was just a forest until they flooded it and made it into this swamp it is today. The water line over here is actually extremely clear. From the ground, that's probably 10, 11 feet off the ground from that point of view. I'm standing on the road, which gives me a good three and a half feet or so. But that's super interesting seeing that water scar. And I hope this update video was interesting of the area. And it does look promising. Beavers will probably be back here since they've already repopulated the lower pond. Built a massive dam. I mean a massive beaver lodge. It's one of the biggest beaver lodges I've ever seen. And look at the ripples that just happened in the water. It's just random stinky gas bubbles coming up. Not a beaver. 
just some stinky gas bubbles randomly just came up out of the swamp. Nature's farts. Hear a bunch of angry crows. If you're interested in the flood video I have from last year, I had to walk down here a couple miles because the road was closed. And I guess because of where the dominant water lines are, I guess it sat there for a while. But I can tell you it was definitely higher for a little bit of time where there aren't water lines because in my video, I was up on this hill right here. And I was like, it was hard to notice this bright yellow gate. But when I was standing up here on the hill, I zoomed in and just very faintly, you could see this thing under the water. This gate was underwater all the way up here. And from down there, I'd say that's a good 12 feet of elevation, at least from the surface of the water where it sits today. This whole road here was completely flooded out that goes around there. This road is accessed for hunters. This area is open to hunters. This area is open to logging. It is a area for wildlife. It's also watershed for drinking water. That's why nothing's being built out here. And take a look at this, some re remnants of the floods. Look at this, this gigantic clump of swamp grass when it flooded got lifted up because it just floats. And it got stranded up here all over the place, honestly. You can still see remnants of the flood. Big clumps that aren't supposed to be up here. Interesting. You can even call this little stuff bogs. So a lot of this grassland you see out here might have water underneath it or mud underneath it. And if it floods, a good amount of this wetland will actually float up with the water and it can break loose and it causes this it can break loose during floods and clog culverts instantly washing out roads there's even youtube videos bogs acres big break off free during storms or wind storms because some bogs are so big they're floating islands basically they have big mature trees on them and it catches wind like a sail Someday the whole island just takes off across the lake, smashing people's boats, docks, crashing into a bridge, blocking the bridge. And if it's during a storm, it blocks the bridge and takes the whole thing out with the water surge. There's videos like that, bogs blocking bridges, videos of ships and boats working together, anchoring onto the trees and pulling the floating island away. And then they anchor it somewhere, tie it up somewhere where it won't damage anything. Those videos are super cool and they interested me a lot if you're interested in those videos others have posted. This is the best example of a long-term flood ever. It just stained all the trees. It was about a three month long flood. Thanks for watching everyone. And have a great day. Today's actually a holiday. I'm surprised there's so few people out on the logging roads. It is such a nice day. These are Massachusetts logging roads. It's hunting season. I'm surprised people aren't taking advantage of the holiday. In the United States, I believe today is Columbus Day. In Canada, it's Thanksgiving. You know what's interesting? Back here, a lot of the trees were stained a darker color from the floods. All the trees that are alive got darker from the floods, but the dead petrified swamp trees down there actually got bleached from it, which is pretty cool. Well, we have someone coming. I didn't even know it was a thing. A watershed ranger just talked to me. Usually the rangers that have ever seen me out at these locations before have green trucks or I guess sometimes white trucks too. And they'll say something like fishing game or environmental protection officer or something like that. I've never seen a vehicle that says watershed ranger. It's a new thing I've never heard of before. But the guy stopped and briefly talked to me. Probably because I waved to him as he drove by. But, yeah. 
flood's interesting here. Thanks for watching, everyone. And have a great day. This area is very pretty. And it was flooded still right here. That where I'm driving was underwater just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I believe it stopped right around here. See the old rock walls in the woods? This all used to be farmland, but when you're farming, you use fertilizers, you have equipment that's often leaking oil, hydraulics, things happen on a farm. There's manure, which creates spikes in nitrate levels in the soil, and this area is all a watershed now for a reservoir, so can't have any of those things that could interrupt the quality of drinking water, so years ago this was all bought up by the government and now it's open to hunting recreation but they did that to protect the area from potential spills and hazards from a farm that could cause issues up here is another beaver swamp that's often having issues they flooded the road up here right after this hump but they also had some pretty interesting solutions to it. Uh, that's basically drained too. It's probably just because it's been dry out. Because this area, they work with the beavers. They do not relocate them. Because this area, they protect the beavers because, like I've said in videos before, it is beneficial having the beavers because they create all these ponds. And these ponds are pushing down into the aquifers. And if the aquifers are well charged, then the watershed works better. It also prevents floods like what happened downstream. If they can retain that water in their empty ponds after a drought, because droughts usually end in flooding, if they're retaining it, then they don't have to retain as much with man-made reservoirs. They're a beneficial creature up until they start destroying the roads. But here they work with the beavers. They don't relocate them from this forest. They protect them in this forest to an extent. You're allowed to get permits to go trapping and hunting the beavers, but they won't relocate them themselves. So it's a, I don't know what exactly you would call a place like this. It's open wildlife area, but you are allowed to hunt them to keep their numbers in check not sure what exactly you would call that if you would actually call that a wildlife preserve or not but they keep the numbers in check